everyone, and welcome back to another Minecraft video with me, that Redstone Boss. Today we are back in the Redstone testing world, and we are going to be talking about 10 different logic gates. Now most of these are relatively easy and simple, but there are a few complicated ones down at the back that we will have to take a closer look at. So let's get started with the first one. This is your basic NOT gate, and all it does is if this input line is on, then this is off. It's a signal inverter. So if this is on, then this is not on. If this is not on, then this is on. And basically, lever on, light off, lever off, light on. I am just going to grab a redstone lamp and show you that a little bit better. So when this first lamp is on, then that back lamp is off, and so on. All right, next. Alright, now the way you're going to build this is you're going to put your input, have that coming in here. You can have however, your signal can be however long you want, uh, just as long as it's more than uh, zero signal strength. So as long as it's on, it can be as long as you want. And that's how you build it. The actual logic gate is this right here. Redstone dust feeding into a block with a torch and then another redstone dust. That's it. It's really simple. Alright, next we have our OR gate, and all this is is if this or this is on, or both, if either of these are on, then our light is on. You should be able to figure out how to build that from that bit right there, but in case you're maybe not great at redstone, we run th some redstone up like that, and place a torch there, or lever there, and a lever there. The actual gate is just that. Alright, now we have our AND gate, and what this does is if this AND this is on, then we get no output. If this and this is off, then we get our output. Alright, now the way you're going to build this is you need three blocks across like that. Well, really you only need the two, but I like having one in the middle because it looks better. Then you need two levers there, and two torches there. And then just a bit of redstone dust like that. Alright, next we have our NOR gate, and basically this is a NOT OR gate. So we have our OR gate feeding into our NOT. And now there is a slightly more compact way of doing this, and that is by placing three wool like that, two levers, a piece of redstone dust like that, and our redstone torch. That right there is our NOR gate. So if this or this is on, then we do not get an output. And they can both be on, that doesn't affect anything. Alright, next we have our NAND gate, and this is a NOT AND. So if this and this is on, then that is also on. But if either of these is off, then that is also off. I feel like that's pretty straightforward, and again, it's just And again, it's just the AND gate, like this, and then a OR gate, right there. Now we're moving on to the slightly more complicated ones. This is the XOR gate, and what this does is as long as these two inputs are different. So they're off, that is not different, they are both off, they are both in the same state. But if I turn this one on, we get our output. If I turn this one on, we no longer have an output because they are now the same state. If I turn this one on, we get our output again because they are different. Now the way you're going to build this is, you can go ahead and pause the video right there if you need a uh, overview. Um, but the way we're going to build this is by placing two blocks like that, a 
redstone dust here, here, and then three blocks like that. Torches on the three, and there. Then redstone dust going like that. Now two more redstone dust like so. And I just wanted to double check. So now we place two more blocks there with redstone dust up like that. And finally torches there and our output. And that is all. And of course you would have levers there. Now we have the slightly more complex. This is the X NOR gate. So this is a OR gate, but inverted. So as long as these are the same, it doesn't matter whether they are on or off, as long as they are the same, then we get our output. And now the way you're going to build that is with two blocks there. I remembered the lever that time. Redstone just like that. Our four blocks like so. Five redstone torches. Two dust like that, dust dust, block block, more dust, two more torches like that, our output, and finally have that running into a redstone torch. And there is our output. Alright, now we have one that I'm not completely sure I really understand the use of. This is the imply gate, and so, so let me make sure I'm explaining this correctly. If, if input B, with this one here, is, so we have input A and input B. If input B is on, then we have our signal. If output A is off, it implies that output B is on. So we are getting an output. But if output A is also on, then we are still getting an output because of B. B is on currently. So if we turn B off, then we do not get an output. So if A is off, it implies B is on, meaning we get an output. But if A turns on, then we do not get our output. And of course, this can also be run into a redstone torch. You just put that there. And there's our nimply. I don't know. I don't know what you would call that, but yeah, you can do it. Now finally, we have two different designs of this last one. This is the RS NOR latch. Now these have been around since 2011, I think. These were some of the first redstone devices ever built. And they have a really simple task. When I hit this button, it toggles. Oops. And when I hit the other button, it toggles back. Now if I were to hit this button again, nothing will happen until I hit the other button. And now to demonstrate how this can be useful, I'm going to place a repeater there and our lamp. So when I hit this, sorry, this button, it toggles on. But if I hit the button again, nothing happens. If I hit the other button, it then toggles off. I feel like that's pretty useful. We will get on to uses for that in just a minute after I've displayed this last one. This is, like I said earlier, another design of an RS NOR latch. This one is just one block wide and, and that is why this is more useful. So if I hit this button, that toggles it. So this would be our input. So you would have what your input coming in from whatever machine you're using this on. And that would be the input, so it would toggle this on. And then you just have a reset circuit that switches everything back. So then the next time your input comes through, it locks it on. And I did forget you need to have a redstone torch there. So this is our input. That's locking it on. Reset, that turns it back off. And you can now have another signal coming in. Now uses for this, um, this is in one of my calculators that I've built. This is for the 4-bit binary saving circuit. So this basically saves which number came through. And I'll demonstrate that by locking in a, let's just do a 2. And as you can see, uh, this is divided into 4 sections, or 2 sections I mean. 
Each section represents one number. So here we have our binary 2. And it has been saved by the circuit. Even though that was just a pulse, it still gets saved. And if I come over here and click reset, that sends a signal along the green and resets everything. Now we are over at my other calculator. This one is an 8-bit calculator, and this is the adder subtractor module. Now this right here, oh wow, the voice crack. This right here is a modified, X, well not a modified, but this is a variation of the XOR gate. So I'm basically checking if these two are different. Now we can go up to the final decoder. This is a variation of the AND gate. So you can see we have our uh, all of our torches down at the bottom, and then we have our output al line along the top. Now I'm over at my working Tamagotchi, and as you can see up here, it is a bit of a mess, but this is another variation of the AND gate. Uh, yes, AND gate. Uh, I was totally confident about that. Alright, and I think that basically wraps things up for this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you did don't forget to leave a like and comment down below what you'd like to see in an upcoming video. And also, like I said last video, still only about 40% of my viewers are actually subscribed, so please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next Minecraft video. Goodbye!